Edvo Tech Tips, Reading a DNA Standard Marker. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Danielle Snowflake and I am a scientist at Edvo Tech. In this video, we're going to discuss the DNA ladder. This is a common reagent used in biotechnology laboratories to size DNA fragments in agarose gels. To get everyone up to speed, agarose gel electrophoresis is a biotechnology technique that uses electricity and a porous gel matrix to separate mixtures of DNA molecules into discrete zones or bands based on size. As the length of a DNA molecule increases, the distance that it can travel decreases. So we find larger molecules at the top of the gel and we find smaller molecules at the bottom of the gel. But how do you know the size of your DNA fragments after electrophoresis? You use a DNA ladder, which we see in the first lane on this gel. You may have seen this called molecular size marker or standard DNA fragments. Regardless of what you call it, the DNA ladder allows us to determine the size of our experimental DNA fragments after they are separated by electrophoresis. A DNA ladder contains a series of DNA fragments of known molecular weight that we compare to our experimental samples. They are run on the same gel as our experimental bands so that a direct comparison between the two can be made. Now, in many experiments, like this one, which is Edvotech Kit 301, the success of the experiment depends on the size of the DNA fragments matching their theoretical size. For example, we can analyze our molecular cloning experiments using restriction enzymes. We use the DNA sequence information to predict the banding pattern of a restriction digest if our insert and our vector combine in a specific way, and then we perform the experiment to see what we get. So let's analyze a simple cloning experiment where we insert a piece of DNA into a plasmid vector. There are two possible orientations for our DNA sequence to be inserted into our plasmid as described by these maps. We can distinguish between the two by digesting the DNA with echo R1 and looking at the results. For our experiment to be a success, we need bands of 3000 and 1280 base pairs, which corresponds to the top plasmid on the slide. So let's try it. I digested two of the plasmids using Echo R1, and I'm going to use the Edvotech Edge to analyze the restriction digests. This new system integrates the power supply, electrophoresis chamber, and blue light visualization system into one unit. The gel runs for at least 20 minutes at 150 volts. I ran this one a little longer for better separation between the bands. I've also put CyberSafe, a fluorescent DNA stain, into the gel so we can watch the DNA as it moves through the gel. So let's take a look at our gel. Here are the results from our restriction digests of two different plasmids. For our experiment to be a success, we need bands of 3000 and 1280 base pairs. So how do we know which plasmid is the right one? We compare them to our DNA ladder in lane one. In sample one, lane two, the top band is between the 2800 and 3600 base pair bands in our ladder. In sample two, the top band is above the 3600 marker. Now, let's take a look at the lower bands. We can see that the lower band in sample one is just above the 1100 band in the DNA ladder. In sample two, the lower band is below the 630 band in the DNA ladder. From this analysis, our results show that sample one has the insert in the correct orientation as related to the backbone. There are a few caveats to using a DNA ladder. First, the ladder must be on the same gel as the samples you're road analyzing. This is because running conditions like time and voltage, as well as the percent agros of the gel, affect the migration of the DNA fragments. Comparing the ladder on one gel and bands on a second gel would skew your results. Next, you have to choose the correct ladder for your analysis. Ideally, the bands in the ladder would flank those in your experimental sample, which would allow you to make a more accurate estimate. So here's our gel again. As we can see, the topmost bands in our experimental samples are larger than the top bands of the Edvo Quick Ladder, which is in lane 4. So we can't use this ladder for this particular analysis. Finally, some DNA ladders can be used to estimate the mass of DNA present in a sample by comparing the intensity of the bands in the ladder to your sample. For example, this ladder is from Thermo Fisher Scientific. But be careful, this feature can only be used if you load the amount of ladder that is recommended by the manufacturer. So in this video, we discussed DNA ladders, why we use them, how we use them, and how not to use them. I hope this helps you achieve success in your next electrophoresis experiment. Thanks for listening. 
We pride ourselves on providing the highest quality customer service for our teachers. Call, email, or send us a message on social media.